Hi there, uh, this is Eric Mabo with uh, Portfolio24. In this video, I'm going to uh, provide an update from ARK Invest about uh, Binano Sapphire Machine, uh, which this is an update that uh, Simon from ARK Invest uh, 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 presented in a podcast after reviewing the uh, uh, symposium and also after talking to some other experts. I'm going to give you a brief background of where this update is coming from. Uh, initially, uh, back in December, when uh, Binano published uh, uh, a press release that uh, there was an article published showing that um, the Binano system is far better than the PacBio system, and uh, so uh, Simon decided to uh, go ahead and did, he did some more research. He published out a series of tweets, pretty much saying that he thinks that the Binano system is more suitable for research purposes. Uh, however, there was also another series of tweets from Binano and then they actually held a symposium where a good number of experts from around the world uh, did their presentations. And I believe after reviewing all this information and also talking to some other uh, physicians and uh, bioinformatician experts, uh, Simon van Ack Invest is uh, changing his mind. He's becoming more convinced about Binano's technology. So I'm just going to go through this and let you uh, listen to the video. Uh, first of all, I'll, uh, please uh, try to subscribe to this channel. This will help us grow the channel. Give me some encouragement to make some more videos. Uh, click on the bell so that when I publish a video, you know, like the video. And please share your comments so that I have an idea of what you're thinking about. Uh, this presentation. My uh, disclaimer here, uh, this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. It's not financial or medical advice. Please consult an expert who can really help you. So I'm going to go ahead and play the, the audio here from the podcast and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more after that. We'll, we're going to jump back to Simon. Um, so, Simon, a few questions for you. The first, um, what are your thoughts on the genomic technology called optical mapping? Yeah, thanks, Ren. Um, so first off, I'd like to reemphasize uh, our belief that sequencing and mapping are complementary technologies, each one with its own part in a Venn diagram. So, you know, we don't see this as being a zero-sum game by any means. And I wrote a Twitter thread about this, um, mostly to dispel what we felt were, um, you know, improper comparisons between these methods based on things like price, uh, variant detection, and, and the use cases. So that seems to be how most folks read it. Uh, still, uh, the feedback that I've gotten from from doctors and bioinformaticians has has changed my view in two places. So I'd like to outline uh, what those are. Uh, the first is that large structural variant sensitivity uh, changes and improvements in sample throughput and quality assurance software um, put the Sapphire instrument, which is an, an optical mapping instrument, in a good position to simplify from legacy cytogenetic methods, uh, things like fish or karyotyping that are uh, tedious, to say the least, uh, to, to handle in some of those pathology labs. So uh, the second thing is that uh, improving the ability for long read sequencing platforms, so, so not mapping, uh, improving their ability to detect large structural variants is probably going to come from neural network assisted variant calling, um, such as Google's deep variant, instead of the extension and read length. So that, that, those are the two sort of main changes that I've had from uh, my communications. Uh, so I'll just end by saying that we still maintain the belief that hi-fi sequencing um, provide the, the single most comprehensive method for variant detection across all types. Uh, and as such, we think should become standard for many clinical applications, such as whole genome sequencing, provided that the costs and the throughput uh, improve over the next few years. So, you know, over the past decade, long read sequencing has improved roughly 10,000 fold in throughput and declined about 50 times in price. So that we think uh, that by the end of 2025, as we've modeled um, through things like the price elasticity of demand, throughput improvements, as well as the ocean of population scale data that is coming through various corporate collaborations, um, long read sequencing, inclusive of, of all vendors, um, could grow to essentially a $5 billion 
revenue opportunity uh, by 2025. Um, and so with that, I'll say that you know we've got more meetings lined up with uh, bioinformaticians and, and people that really operate in the sequencing uh, tool space to um, try to continue to evolve our opinions. So if anything else changes, I'll, I'll be sure to let people know, but that's my, my pulse of where uh, you know, my understanding of the technology is now. Great, thank you. Um... <clears throat> So I think this is really uh, interesting. Uh, first of all, what I picked from this audio is that he uh, initially stated that sequencing and uh, mapping, sequencing is the technology from PacBio, and mapping is the technology from BioNano. They are complementary, so they will both exist together. And the other point that he put, uh, stated was that uh, he's received a lot of feedback from other doctors and bioinformaticians, and he is now changing his mind. Uh, the first thing that he's changing his mind is what you see on this slide here that pretty much uh, BioNano's technology is going to replace some other older uh, tests like karyotyping, macroarray, fish and southern blood, uh, which is actually very, uh, which is a, a huge market for the clinical diagnostics. And uh, I fully agree with him. Uh, the second thing that he stated was that uh, he believed that improving long reach sequencing uh, will uh, will help uh, actually give a comprehensive uh, view of the genome and this should become standard of care if he said provided the cost decreases and the throughput increases however the only problem with that is that uh, uh, the uh, pack bio technology is going to take uh, several more years, probably up to 2024, 2025, before it comes uh, to, to market. Uh, he also stated that he believes that the whole market for long read sequencing, which will also be the market that um, uh, BioNano will be tapping into, is a $5 billion market by 2025. So if you think about it, if BioNano can capture only 20% of that market, uh, which they can easily do because they're the leading optical genome mapping company at this time then uh, I can see the price target for this company being uh, above a hundred dollars within the next uh, uh, three uh, three years or so so um, he basically stated that he was going to be holding some more meetings with informaticians and doctors and uh, hopefully down the road when they do these consultations, they'll come to a conclusion whether to buy the stock or not. And one of the things that ARK Invest is going to start investing in BioNano at some point, my hope is that they wait for the price to go up to somewhere around $15 or $20 because once they start investing, the price is going to double. So if the price goes up to $15 or $20 and then they start investing, we'll be looking at you know, $30, $40, $50, hopefully before the end of this year. So this is my take about uh, this whole audio. I hope this information helps you uh, to make a decision about uh, BioNano. As I said, I'm invested in the company. I'm just doing a lot of research as much as I can, trying to share to everybody. I'm a clinician, so I'm trying to help every other person uh, to really understand what this technology is all about. So if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, uh, share the video, some other people hopefully it's going to help somebody else and please also put a comment below i hope this was helpful to you i hope you have a wonderful day and may god bless you thank you very much